I'm a feminist, but yesterday I spent about 45 minutes debating if I had sexy toenails. <laughs> what? It's a valid question. What does that even mean? That was the debate. <laughs> what, what is it to be a sexy toenail? What in the, in the world of feet defines sexuality and like makes you feel good? As you can see, I did not come to a conclusion in the debate. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but when my friends told me they were having a baby last night, I said, are you getting married? <laughs> I packed it in the ice of, of course, you don't have to, I'm just interested. <laughs> and they said, we don't think we need a piece of paper. And I said, but I could officiate and we could have an amazing party. Please get married, I'll help plan it. And then I sent her pictures of wedding dresses. <laughs> just little gifts and stuff, just little gifts. I'm a feminist, but last week, instead of watching that new Joan Didion documentary on Netflix, I watched like half of Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> oh! I haven't seen it yet, but I definitely will watch it. <laughs> I'm a feminist but I'm quite disappointed that it's official that I'm not marrying Prince Harry. <laughs> because I think he's the sexiest royal, except for Matt Smith as Prince Philip in The Crown. <laughs> I definitely would do him for sure every night. And obviously, I don't think there should be a monarchy because equality, <laughs> important that we do not sustain ancient traditions that have no place in a democratic society. But I'm just saying if I had to do a royal, <laughs> it would be Prince Harry or Matt Smith as Prince Philip in The Crown, if I had to. If I didn't have to, I probably would do them anyway, but I would feel bad about it because they're both married, nearly, and also republicanism. I mean, if I had to, I also wouldn't bang the one who dressed as a Nazi, but like, you know, that's fine. We can... <laughs> Learning every day. He's cute, though. He's cute, though. He's, yeah. a, he's the most rock and roll royal. Listen, Aryan children are cute. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. You can finish the rest of the sentence. I'm a feminist, but that same last week, when I was really tired, my friend who has been like, a friend for a while, she called me and she wanted to like just talk politics. It's our relationship, we talk politics. And she's on the phone, she was talking, but I was real tired and she wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> so I muted on my end and that's when I watched half of Fifty Shades Dark. Oh! <laughs> what? Oh my. Listen, I'm a very political person. <laughs> Sometimes I need to talk late at night. Yeah. Um, but you didn't know until I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely was not me. It wasn't me. I would know if you're watching Fifty Shades Darker on mute. I'm a feminist, but I felt a little insecure this evening just backstage when just before we were about to come out, Bija K. Ali said to me, do you know you've got a hat on? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, no, it's part of the outfit. And she went, oh, good, just as long as you know. <laughs> Could I not? No. Could I not? No. I mean, it doesn't, it just didn't, it didn't imbue me with confidence. But I thought, no, keep it on, stick to your guns, hold your faith. You know what looks good on you. It does look good on you. No, that's not what was happening. What? Because I, because I sometimes accidentally wear a hat. Yes. Because I don't really pay too much attention to what's like I'm physically wearing. Because I just, I'm like, oh, I can't unpack all the self loathing, so I'll just leave it. So I. <laughs> And so I don't know, sometimes I'll leave a hat on and I'll be like, oh, did I mean to do that? And then I like self conscious and it's in my head, but you're way more confident in how you, like, you put together mm. your outfits. Mm. So I should have known better and I projected my own insecurities onto you, as I am doing right now as I speak, I understand that. Um, and so you look great with a hat and I'm sorry I said it. <laughs> Live from the Y in Leicester, the Spontaneity Shop presents The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White. Guest co-host, Bisha Kayani. And very special guest, Pima Bob, talking about the tool of funny. This 
is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. Fish Kelly, hello. Hello. Have you had a guilty week or a feminist week? A feminist week. Have you? What have you been doing? I was just arguing with a lot of journalists. Oh. It's been a hot week. I don't know if anyone's seen this story, but you can't say it yet because it's Squish Kayali's challenge. Today we are talking about the tool of funny. I think as feminists it's really easy because it's easy to feel angry and anger is a good tool and a useful tool and a valid tool. But it's really easy to feel like that's the only tool in our box. Mm. My uh, box is full of tools. <laughs> I knew it. I'm I sorry. Thought, I'm so as soon as I said I'm box, so I just looked at her and I was like, She's going to let it go. I'm sorry that we just, we just started there. And usually I'm not like this. But now we're in that zone. Okay, I'm, I'm going to desexualize this whole thing. I've never thought of that before. That sometimes you call a penis a tool and sometimes you call a vagina a box. Uh, no, I've never thought... That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> but now that seems like the logical joke to have made. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant when you said my box is full of tools. Deborah, I just used the tool of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> that sometimes... Sometimes you can use the tool of comedy. And, or, oh, God, right. the, right. the weapon right. of comedy. Nope, not better, not better. Right. Especially if you go on Twitter. Like, you see great one-liners, but then as soon as people get into an argument, people go into this mode where they have to say the most vitriolic thing possible, and often we think it's the only valid response, and there are other valid responses, and sometimes those responses, they can win more listeners, they can draw people to you, They can break things down, and they definitely break down barriers. I think observational comedy is one of the best things to break down barriers, because when we all laugh collectively, it means we've all admitted something, and then no one individual has to admit that's what it is. And, like, you know, if it's Michael McIntyre, people might be admitting they also have a man draw. Yeah. But also, (laughs) imagine if if Michael McIntyre was, like, doing the stuff, but then was also like, oh, we all have white privilege, and he just slid it in there with the tube door jokes. Mm. Imagine. (laughs) You know, who he could, like... Do, it would be amazing. Tool. And I wonder if Michael McIntyre listens to this podcast, and I assume he does. <laughs> he might. We don't know. Yeah, Michael, he's a, if he you're seems listening. like a nice dude. Yeah, do a man draw joke. Do a putting up your Christmas tree joke. All good jokes. And then slide in a white privilege joke or a male privilege joke or and a undermine yourself. Joke. And I'll be, yes. Mm. It would yeah. just be amazing if more mainstream comedians just slid one of those in occasionally. I feel like that's the that's opposite you. of what the time I feel that's you. requires. Please welcome to the stage with a big a guilty feminist a clapping and shouting, the wonderful Bisha Kayali! <laughs> Hello, hi friends. Uh, I've had a very strange week. I um, was embroiled in an international art scandal. (gasps) Indeed. um, I took a motherfucker down. (laughs) In my pyjamas, mostly. (laughs) And in my living room. And I feel like I did it with the power of comedy. Right? I mean, I've lost you immediately. (laughs) But I felt like we were on a good path together. (laughs) But this is what happened, right? Um, It started when I was 16 years old. Okay, it's a long story. <laughs> but you're all locked in now, it's fine. <laughs> so when I was 16 years old, and I went to a summer camp in Vancouver, in Canada, right? Where I met this guy, and I kind of fell in love with him. Oh my goodness, he will never listen to this, it's fine. <laughs> so I just realized that he knows I'm specifically talking about him. Anyway, guys, I have not thought this through. <laughs> so I met this guy, I was 16 years old, we were friends for ages, and then five years passed, and then I met him again at a reunion, We all went to Vegas, and I was like, I have no money, I'm completely broke, but I'm gonna go to Vegas, so maybe we can fulfill the dream of, you know, docking body parts. (laughs) (laughs) So we're in Vegas, and he's like, he is actually a beautiful Aryan man, right? He's like, (laughs) he's really tall, blonde curly hair, he has like dimples, his face is just like cut from stone. Uh, he's a stunning guy. I'm sorry for objectifying him. He's also very intelligent. So when we were in Vegas, he was like, oh, I'm studying at Princeton to become an architect. And I was like, oh my God, I want you in my mouth. And it was real... <laughs> it was real intense. And by you, I mean his mind and conversation. So... <laughs> so we went to Vegas. I was broke. I did a master's degree, which I dropped out of. And... Uh, 
I had a job that I just quit. I was like, I'm going to become a stand-up comedian. That's a good income. Uh, and so I had nothing. And we were at this poker table, and he was playing like, I'll just like, bleh, I'll just blow out like $5,000. I was like, I've got £10.50. <laughs> and like, I went into so much debt on that trip trying to keep up with him that I paid it off two years ago, right? That's six years later. <laughs> right. He's so cute, guys. Right. <laughs> Fast forward another six years, right? In the interval, I'm married, right? I got married to somebody I'm completely happy and in love with. I haven't heard from this guy in six years, thank you very much. I haven't heard from ta- this guy, <laughs> don't say no. <laughs> I haven't heard from him in six years, right? So this week, out of the blue, on Monday night, I get a message. And the notification pops up before the message. It says, uh, Tim McGee has sent you a message. <laughs> and I was really excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be like... I know that you're married now, but I just need you to know that you're the one that got away. And I've always had feelings for you, and there were so many chances we could come together, and I'm sorry I got you into 10,000 pounds of debt, but you need to know that I've always loved you. That's what I wanted to say. Instead, what it said was, um, hey, Bisha, this is really weird, but I was walking through an underpass in the city of Calgary. The underpass like, smelt like shit and piss, and there was just a giant poster of your face. <laughs> and I said, uh, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, this is you, right? And he'd taken a photograph of an art installation that was in this underpass, right? And the art installation was seven foot by six foot, and it was my face. In an underpass that smelt like human piss. <laughs> in a city I've never visited before. And on top of my face, it was kind of blurred out, were the words, I want love. <laughs> I was like, this is so searingly accurate. <laughs> so look, this happened, and I was like, I have no idea what this is. I didn't give anybody permission to use my face. I know that the photographer who took the photograph never gave permission to anybody to use that photograph. So I was like, okay, what the hell's going on? I'm going to hunt this down. So this is what it turns out happened. I start Googling. The city of Calgary has like a public art fund, right? And they publicly fund art by this big name, big, big name artist, right? And it's an art installation where they put up 20 photographs like that, that he had said he had taken of homeless people living in the underpass. <laughs> right. This is what the commission was. And he got paid $20,000 to do it, right? So I said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust this case wide open. <laughs> <laughs> so I continue to Google, right? And I see the pictures of the rest of the photographs in the underpass. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm like, hang on. I know the people in these photographs. That's Sophie Hagen. <laughs> That's one of Sophie Hagen. There's another one who's a good friend of mine, another comedian, his name's Chris Betts. His photo, right in the middle of it, massive, Chris Betts. And immediately I'm like, that's Chris Betts? There's another one, there's a guy called Damo Clark. I'm like, oh my God, that's Damo Clark. His exact height, his exact face, a photograph I've seen a hundred times, right? So I go through all these photographs and they're all comedians that I know or that I don't know personally, but are kind of big in the UK. So what it turns out this guy has done is he's used the Edinburgh Fringe Festival program, <laughs> <laughs> stolen the photographs, blown them up to seven foot by six foot, taller than my physical body, put them up in an underpass and said they're homeless people he's met on the streets of Calgary <laughs> that people can then connect with as they walk through the town, right? So I start a Twitter thread, and I think I'll deal with this with comedy and be lighthearted about it, because that's how I do things. So I start this thread, and I said... Thread. I'm hype. I'm about to bust this case wide open. <laughs> That's how I start, right? And then I begin to unravel the tale, much as I have done for you. And I said, to be clear, this is $20,000 in Canadian public money. This is taxpayers' money. At least four to five uncredited photographers and models who haven't been asked for the permission to use. I don't want to say it's fraud, but it smells like fraud. And I ended with a Stranger Things gif <laughs> of Elle doing this. I realize this is a podcast, so what I just did is she did the, like, I'm watching you sign, right? <laughs> That's what I did. And it went viral. It just went off the chain within a matter of hours. But the next day, I'd done eight interviews with different Canadian TV channels. I'd done radio interviews. It was on the BBC website this week as well, because it got picked up over here. It was in the National. It was all over the place. It was in the Times, right? But all along the way, in all of the interviews, I was doing it in the tone that I kind of talked to you guys. I was like, 
this is how I told it. They said, oh, so how did it feel? This guy saw your face and he sent you a picture? And I said, yeah, that's exactly how it was. I was like, dude, that's my face. It's a giant face. <laughs> I used exactly that tone, right? But every time it came to reporting, when I'd read the article back afterwards, they changed it. So they said, Bishop K. Ali, this comedian from the UK, is very angry and upset and finds it disrespectful that he's used her photograph. Yeah, and I did say those words, but I was like, dude, I'm so angry! Like, it's, <laughs> like it's a very different tone to how they're pitching it. So all along the way, they changed, the narrative changed through the media. They started turning into me being a victim and this guy being like an attacker. So eventually, this guy apologized. It was a half-assed apology, and he said to the city, take it down. So the city then takes down these giant posters that happened yesterday with giant washer jets, right? So they just had a picture of my face getting washed away, <laughs> which is much more terrifying for your spirit <laughs> than you realize. And they also, this is the worst bit, is they've stopped the public art funding program. Yeah, which I hate. I'm an artist. I love art. It's beautiful. It's important. It builds community. It's a great thing. But now I'm like, oh, am I at fault? And they started this narrative, I'm the bad guy, well, I'm the victim, sorry. And I started thinking, am I really a victim? Have I been hurt? Am I angry? Am I upset? Is this guy disrespectful? And it just spiraled. I spiraled out into a whole different person. So at the beginning, I was like, cool guy, having a good time. And then by the end, I'm like, oh, I'm really sad about art. <laughs> I don't know if that's the position you've ever been in. So the conclusion I've drawn is this, right? There's one video that exemplifies it with a reporter who's covering the story. So I'm telling my story, and he goes, Bisha K. Ali claims that her face was stolen, used without her permission. Cut to Bisha K. Ali going, Dude, that's my face! A hundred percent, it's my face! <laughs> and then he goes, Her Twitter thread, making the accusations, read as follows. Thread. I am hype. I'm going to bust this case wide open. <laughs> My point is, guys, what they try to do is they turn like what's happy and joyful for me, and what, the reason it became a big deal was because I did it with comedy, I did it with humor, I did it with a kind of a tongue-in-cheek angle. That's why people were interested in the story and it got bigger and bigger. If I'd written as an article being, being angry, it's not going viral. The newspapers aren't chasing me up for it, right? And that's the power of comedy. That's what you can do with it. It gets an idea in here, and then it spreads like wildfire. And what they did is they tried to create victim and an attacker, essentially, someone who's a bad guy and someone who's a good guy. With comedy, we can have a bit more nuance, we can have more conversation about it. That's why I think it's more important. And finally, <laughs> one thing that really confused me about them messing with my tones is like, I can't be angry and also use six to seven Stranger Things gifts at the same time. <laughs> You've been great, thank you so much. Hello, guilty feminists. I'm briefly interrupting your podcast listening pleasure to let you know that if you are in London, there will be a global pillage at 4pm on April 15th at King's Place. You can come live and be in the hive mind. And our guests include Sindhu V, Paul Sinha and Philippa Scoffey, mind reader. If you are around on April 29th, global pillage will be back at King's Place at 4pm and it will include Jessica Foster Q, Rosie Jones, Gronya Maguire and Johnny Cochran. And you can get tickets for both those shows now at the King's Place website. Jessica Foster Q is still on tour, so go and see her live solo show, which is absolutely brilliant. You can check if it's coming to a town near you at jessicafosterq.com. Also, we have more Guilty Feminists coming up in the UK. Check out guiltyfeminist.com for all sorts of dates. And please hold May the 2nd in your diary if you're in London. For a Help Refugees fundraiser, Comics for Calais by The Guilty Feminist. Please also listen to our special episode on Calais, which came out recently, in which I talked to the volunteers at Calais. And then go to helprefugees.org to donate. And if you are donating tents, sleeping bags and the like, if you could put Guilty Feminist in the box at the end for their research, they'd appreciate it. They also need volunteers. Check out that episode. And now back to the podcast. Our guest today is a comic actress and comic actress from Houston, Texas in the United States of America. She is on a mission to better her health, habits and craft. Please welcome the truly extraordinary Kima Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So 
intimate. So intimate. Kimar Bob. Good day. Yeah, you are a comedian. That's true. That's what I like to say. That's um, what my mom says to everyone that she meets. Does she? Is that, yeah. what, is that how she opens? My daughter's Kimar Bob. She's a comedian. I have a kid. Comedy. That's what she does. <laughs> does she? <laughs> My mother doesn't do that. My mother said to me once, I don't really know what you do because you do so many things, don't you? When people ask what you do, I don't know what to say. And she said, so I just say script writer. And I said, well, comedian's an easy one to remember, isn't it? And she said, yes, darling, but I'm trying to impress people. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, fair enough. When I tell my mum I'm a comedian, she goes, but you don't have a funny face. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. So, Kima, how much do you think that comedy can be a tool to change the world? Oh, how do I quantify this? How much? An I don't know. exact, on precise percentage. I'm not looking for a. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not looking for an exact 98% metric. Ninety-eight percent sure. I'm ninety-eight <laughs> percent sure. What's up with the two percent? Um, you know. Explain it in detail. That's the disparity between things that people think are funny and things that other people think are funny. <laughs> It's true, because we don't all find the same things funny. No, we I don't. I mean, we all do, because you've all come here because you've already thought this show was funny. So that's why this show is funny tonight. If we try to do this show at Jonglers... <laughs> they say, what is a racism? I've never been accused of that. <laughs> a what? <laughs> a what? A racism? What? I don't know what that means. Uh, no, I've never heard of that. I don't speak that. I don't know what that no. is. Now, can, we're a good Jonglers audience. You really are. <laughs> Can I tell you my thing that happened this week that was like my challenge that I realized I sort of failed so that as a conversation starter? Go for it. I love when people start conversations. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're doing great. The so conversation is going well. We're doing real good tonight. Well. I have time. We're hot. So yeah. I was on a train and this thing happened to me. It was pretty extraordinary. So. My friends and I sat on a table on a train and then these guys got on the train at exactly the same time and the whole rest of the carriage was empty. It was late at night and they sat at the table exactly opposite. They would kind of look like they'd been drinking and they tried to start up a conversation but they were all... Got, you know when people don't try to start up a conversation like, hey, where are you guys going? But more like the guy was going, put your phones down, we're all going to talk. And I, and I was like, oh, this is not going to go well. And you could charming. see... Yeah, it was just really kind of very nice. I said, oh, we're doing a bit of work, which we actually were. We'd been at a work thing. And we're like, oh, we're just doing a bit of work. And I tried, I always try and be polite. I don't just ghost them in front of their faces. But I tried to give him all the nice signals. We're not going to engage in this. We know what you want. You want to, you know, it was, it was me, another woman, and a man. They were four guys, and they were kind of going for it. And then one of them took a phone call. He said some of the most extraordinary things I've ever heard. He was advising a man how to sleep with a woman who he'd already slept with. But he was saying it in the most aggressive way. It was nothing to do with what she wanted. I mean, not that she would want him to talk about this on a train loudly, but it sounded like he had been very violent to her and he was advising the man to be violent. And then he said, and make sure you don't call her a cab. Wow. Now, I, th wow. I, th I, think, he was, other thing. I yeah. think he was doing it for my benefit to wind me up. It wasn't the same guy that had tried to talk to us but he was doing it very loudly, and his friend next to him was just laughing and laughing. Right. And it was, sounded like he was either showing off to this guy or doing it for my benefit or a little bit of both. But he kept on and kept on and kept on, and I just thought, I cannot sit here and listen to this. So I said to him, excuse me, sir, what you're saying sounds very violent to me. Because it was like really going into my... It was penetrating my chest. It was just like... <gasps> like that. And so I just said, what you're saying sounds very violent to me. And he went, oh, someone's trying to talk to me while I'm on the phone, mate. <laughs> anyway, I just said, please stop. You're being very violent. And then he eventually hung up. And then he said, what the fuck? I could talk. You don't know what she likes. You don't know what she likes. You don't know what I like. You don't know what you... Just because it's not what you like. I said, you don't know what I like. But I'm pretty sure that no woman likes a man talking about having had sex with her on a train to another man while the rest of the carriage hears. She can't really consent to that. And he was like, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Shut the fuck up, shut the fuck Deborah up. Deborah Francis White, bitch. <laughs> Is that what you said? Is that what you said? Um, no, I... Uh, That's what I I'd not. say, I... even if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just... I sort of made my point and then I stopped talking. He said, shut the fuck up and who the fuck are you? And three times and I just stopped and let it go. I think I did quite well because 
it hadn't gone the way he'd wanted. He'd wanted to upset me, and I was very calm, but I just kept saying that what he was saying sounded violent and that it didn't sound like she was consenting. But I wasn't in any way funny, and I know it wasn't appropriate to do like five minutes of stand up. Set, yeah. Like a set. I wasn't too appropriate to go, hey, a funny thing about traveling on trains. The, <laughs> door, <laughs> the doors just shut on you. Why did they bounce back? Why did they bounce back? Uh, that wouldn't have been appropriate, but I would have stopped him, I tell you. Um, afterwards, they got off the train. They didn't talk to us again, and he didn't do it again. No. And I don't think he will do it again in quite that way. Or if he does, he's not expecting the reaction that he was expecting. But while I was lying in bed falling asleep, I realised what I should have done. I wish I just surreptitiously got my phone out and started recording him and then lifted it up so it was clear I was filming him. And then when he started saying, what are you doing, you can't film me, I would have said, oh, no, 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 because this is evidence because it sounds like you've sexually assaulted a woman and you're encouraging someone else to do the same, so we're going to need this for the police. Because then... (laughs) Because then, when he says, you don't know what she likes, you don't know what she likes, I'll say, well, yeah, we'll find out. Like, when this goes viral, we'll find out what she likes. And if she says, no, that's what I like. I like men talking about me on trains as if they've sexually assaulted me (laughs) and advising other men to sexually assault me and not call me a cab, then it's great. It's fine for you. That'll be good. And if it turns out she's nobody because you're making this up because you've never slept with anybody, then (laughs) that's... Then... Then that's the best case scenario for you, my friend. But if 15 or 20 women all think it's them, because this is how you operate, Mm. because you are, in fact, a rapist who encourages other men to rape, then you're really going to be in trouble. So let's hope that no women identify you. And then when he says, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? In this fantasy where I'm lying in bed realising what I should have (laughs) done. At that point, I turn the camera around on myself. (laughs) (laughs) And I say... I'm Deborah Francis White. I've got a podcast called The Guilty Feminist, and that means I'm part of a large army. And, and that army that I'm a part of will all make this video go viral so we're all sure that no women anywhere want to sleep with you ever again. <laughs> Boom. And then... And then, in my head, I drop the mic. I don't know where I've got a mic from because I haven't got one on the train. But in my head, as I'm falling asleep, I drop the mic. And I wake up and I go, damn, why didn't I do that? I'm so disappointed with myself. Next time. That's what I'll do. Oh, my goodness. Bisha, why are you looking at me like you're embarrassed for me? (laughs) It's because it was, like, like real hype when I was with you, right? Like, I was with you with, like, recording you and we put it on the internet and I blah, blah, and then you're like, and I have a podcast. (laughs) So I like, wanted to say, like the, the capitalism just is just sneaking right in <gasps> at the end of like the stuff. Oh, like I'm that. a hero. No. I'm a hero with a podcast. How, how, how is that? I, like, oh, I did like a heroic act, and here's some Excuse advertising. Me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, firstly, firstly, podcasts are free, so they're not capitalism. They don't make any money. Secondly, because yeah. well, you guys all got in free, right? No, the live show makes money. <laughs> Live shows make money. That's how we pay you, Bisha. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Don't point over here. No. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but the podcast is free. And all the reason I'm telling him that, because when he's saying, who the fuck are you? He doesn't know that I'm part of an army that can make his thing go viral. But that's I feel why like I'm he's saying. not in, in our world. So, like, to him, <laughs> it must sound no, like... No, but it's for the... When the video goes viral, the Twitter sphere goes, yeah! You don't understand how viral works. Oh, yeah. You it's true. Except you do. Yeah. You do, because you made a thing go viral this week. Maybe I should just leave it to you. I'll send it to you for an edit. Just send it to me for the edit, innit? And if yeah. I'm, like, you're selling it too much at the end, <laughs> I will just cut I, that bit out. I liked it. I liked Let it. Let them I, come to it naturally. Kima, <laughs> could you please adjudicate? Uh, well, what I'm saying is, do you like the sales pitch at the end of the Saviour video or not? God, don't pressure her. I'm not a law professional, but <laughs> if I were to make an effort to adjudicate, uh, I would say that, you know, it could be like, oh, and I have, you know, maybe not like I have a podcast, like I have a following. No, because then that like, sounds like I'm that's Jesus. Creepy. That is kind of creepy. Like, like, I would rather worship you than... Actually, I don't know who's. I'm gonna take a, I will take, I'm gonna, You'd rather I'm gonna, worship me than Jesus. That's where I was going, and I changed my mind halfway <laughs> through the sentence. <laughs> Two minutes ago, you were saying I was a capitalist with a podcast. <laughs> now I'm Jesus. Make now up your mind. I'm worried I'm not getting paid. It's okay? confusing. <laughs> uh, I feel like um, 
It'd be like, and I know a lot of women who would not agree with how you're behaving, <laughs> including probably this woman in question. <laughs> like that, but with more confidence, like self-assured, <laughs> that vibe. And maybe just tight, just tight, yeah. tighter. I know, I know women, I bye. Know. Yeah, oh, women yeah. don't like this. Yeah. I know, because I know some. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good. This is good brainstorming. This yeah. is good brainstorming. Yeah. Do you think I would have been right to video him? Like, I might have been attacked if I'd videoed him. He might have taken the phone away. That was the thing I was worried about. I will say, the one time I was on a bus with my other half, and we were just having a nice time, not doing anything, just sitting on the bus. He was listening to his music. I was playing this game. It's called I Love Hue, where you have to put all the colours, the different hues, into the order, into the thing. It's a great time, right? And this woman gets on, and she seems like she's coming home from work. She sits down on the bus next to us, on the other side, she gets her phone out, and he's lost in his music, and then I just catch out the corner of my eye. She's taking photographs of us. And then my other half is a very quiet, he won't speak to people, but he will become defensive very quickly, rightly so. And he was like, I'm going to ask her what that was. And I said, no, please don't. Please don't ask this stranger why they're taking pictures of us, because if this escalates, you're getting in trouble, not her. But then he was Can like, but I don't know what to do. the ethnicity of this man? Yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, he's a black man. Yeah. So I was like, if this escalates and this white woman tells, we're in trouble. She's not in trouble. But then she kept taking photographs of us, and we just sat there and we fucking ate it. We took it. And then rather than like talking back to her or saying anything, and we got off, and we still, like, sometimes we just wake up and like, do you remember, she just, this woman's put the photographs of us up somewhere, or she has them, or she was mocking us, or she was, I don't know what she was doing with them, and it just sits with us now. So What's I actually don't believe in documenting people on the street. But we weren't doing evil shit. Yeah, I was gonna, but if somebody is basically confessing to sexual assault, I mean, then yeah, sure, record like, them. Yeah, that's. I think in a way, there's a like. If I saw someone being racist on a bus, mm. I would video. Them. But would you video them, or would you? I would challenge them, but I wouldn't blame anyone for videoing it. You gotta video and challenge at the same time, right? Yeah. Do it in selfie mode. Uh, it's the asshole <laughs> cam. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right over there. Right well, over that there. Was you know what, I mean? what was my ending? What was my Okay, I'm gonna replay the ending. I want Bisha to like it. Okay. Okay. Because right. maybe you've never slept with anybody, and that's your best case scenario now. Mm. Because if you've slept with a lot of women and you've treated them like you're treating them then you're in a lot of trouble. Something like that was better before, mm. but okay. <laughs> then he I'm says, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? And I turn the camera around myself and I say, oh, I'm Deborah Francis Wine. And I'm a feminist. And that means I'm part of a large army who mm. are going to make this go viral. That's right, sir. You're the kind of guy that would say, feminists are your worst enemy. And you are correct. Yeah. 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 That's better? I'm sold. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it can still uh, use some work, but we've, we've definitely moved forward, right? We've gained some traction. I'm, I'm, I'm with it now, but now you've turned. It's not that I've turned, I'm just not convinced. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay, could you do the, the, the dream ending? Uh, well, I was gonna, do, like, put my head, like, put myself in the head of, like, a, a creepy guy, right? Like, as a method actor. Okay. And, like, it's just not, it's not scary enough. Oh, I'm still too predatory. You know? Okay. And you remind me of my mom who never loved me, which is part of why I act this way. You know what I mean? Sure, like sure. It's a lot. It's a lot so, okay, all out. right. So, I'm going to be the guy. You've just done the bit Perfect. to me where you've said, you've probably never slept with anyone, but if you, yeah. even you better hope that's true because yeah. otherwise these women are going to come after you. And then I'm going to say, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? I'm being the guy. Just cool, to be, because cool, cool. I don't want to regret shouting you. Perfect. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? A person who's about to attempt murder. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's, no, no, no. okay. No. Cut. Yes. 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 Cut. Cut. No, yes. no, no, no. Yes. The only thing I can't, I just, don't know. Just, no, yeah. the guilty feminist does yeah. not endorse murder or the yeah. threats of murder we but Kima, Kima Bob and Bishop Kelly do like let's okay, do a we're murder gonna yeah. take it, let's, okay, okay, we're going to take it one more time and this time if it could not contain any homicide at all okay Okay. Wow, so who so the good. fuck are you who the fuck are you to be videoing me who the fuck are you <laughs> you don't want to do this and then I just plead I switch and I stop threatening I just say look out for yourself look out for your humanity you're damning your soul, and I don't believe in like that stuff, but I'm bringing in this whole religious like element, <laughs> right? And I'm just hoping that somewhere, you know, he'll connect and he'll understand that this is not the way. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. Change work, strategies, work, 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 you know? Yeah, to surprise him. Yeah, just, what? And he's like, she's crying, I'm crying. Emotional breakthrough. So, 
It's like a yeah. therapeutic angle. It's basically we just slide on into Goodwill Hunting right at the end. <laughs> It's not oh. your fault. It's not your fault. And then he but, breaks down. He's like, I don't oh. know what manhood is. What is it to oh, be so a man? Start hugging him. And yeah. Be like, it's not your yeah. fault. It's not your fault. Okay. And you love I mean, it is. Like, also take responsibility for yourselves. Okay. His body. Okay. Into the clouds. Yeah. His toxic masculinity leaves his body. Yeah. Like in cocoon. Like toxic or rain. It just gets up into the clouds, and then it's just going to rain, rain down somewhere oh. else into the rivers and feed back into the mountain. It'll be mm-hmm. over. Like the circle of toxic masculinity. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. hopefully the clouds will filter out okay. some of the toxic. Uh, we're going to improv it one more time, and I feel like the third one is going to be the gold. Yeah. Okay. It always All right. has been. You've <laughs> <laughs> You're videoing me. You're videoing me. So you have to be looking at me with video, and then I go, "Why are you videoing me? And you're going to put it on the internet? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you?" A woman with a voice that matters. Oh, yeah. That's, you nailed it. Boom. Oh, you nailed it. That's, it you know? That was the nailer. Yeah. That, my friends, Good. was the nailer. We cannot do better than that. No. We really can't. We peaked. We peaked. I want you guys to go wild and crazy for our good, good, good host. <laughs> Deborah Francis White. Sometimes you see something in the news that angers or saddens you so much. And this week, I saw something in the news that the only possible response that I felt I could have was anger. And so I gave myself the challenge to write a piece of comedy about it. And the thing that I was angry about and just like felt genuinely like sick was Donald Trump retweeting Britain First's uh, videos. So I gave myself the challenge. And honestly, I didn't think I could feel anything but vomit and fury, the lesser known classic novel, The Vomit and the Fury. (laughs) And so I gave myself this challenge uh, to write this. Dear Mr. Trump, Mr. President, the D-man, 45, (laughs) the Prez, Trumpington Trump Trump, (laughs) T-Dog, the Donald, Dizzy T, are you okay, hun? Because I gotta be honest, you seem a bit wobbly. I think you know, we know, you don't know how to do this. (laughs) And it's okay. Making all the decisions for a whole country and who that country should eat lunch with in the cafeteria or talk shit about at the pep rally or beat up behind the dumpsters or torture and kill slowly in the basement of the science lab while recording their screams is hard. (laughs) Maybe representing fewer people would be easier. (laughs) You've said on film that you don't treat women with respect. So it's not fair to ask you to act in women's interests. It's too much pressure. (laughs) How about we take ourselves as a gender out of your purview? There you go, you've just cut your work in half. Women are no longer your problem. We will make our own decisions on the inside of our own bodies and how much we are paid and if and when we have babies and all those pesky decisions that have plagued you. What about African Americans? You're really struggling with some of their desires and demands for rights like not being shot point blank by police officers while unarmed and holding their hands in the air. You shouldn't have to work hard all day for people who take a knee during the national anthem when you could be on the 19th hole, right? How about you leave them to choose someone else to represent their interests? You've made it clear that you're not a fan of Mexico or anyone from there. How about Mexican citizens build their own virtual walls around their bodies and choose their own representatives to lead their interests in 2018? LGBT community, you've got issues with them and their desire to be seen as people. They've got issues with every single thing about you. (laughs) How about they take their rainbows and make their own decisions about tax, guns and healthcare, leaving you more time to focus on your core demographic. (laughs) And Muslims, you shared some unsubstantiated videos this week which reminded Holocaust survivors of the precursor to violent exclusion and death camps. That unequivocally demonstrates that you are not their president and cannot make decisions in their interests or claim to represent them in any way. So how about this, and this is a good idea, I think, just thinking out loud. 
that instead of all of those groups having their own representation, they all consolidate their interests into one easy president, <laughs> say Hillary Clinton or <laughs> Bernie Sanders. <laughs> hey, at this point, they'd take Colonel Sanders. <laughs> And you get to be president for people just like you. Let's say billionaires over 70, who'll be dead soon. <laughs> and don't give a fuck about what happens to the world as long as they win the game show, who'll die richest at Armageddon? <laughs> How about we build a wall around you so you're nice and safe from the radical extremism that you and your crew claim you're so very scared of? You'll need all the guns behind your wall because remember, guns make you safer. <laughs> so you keep them all. You sit there with your huge tax cuts on your, let's say, private island, so your children's children don't need to see the frightening sight of gay people living their lives. What about clearing out Guantanamo Bay? That's a secure facility <laughs> that you and your mates could use. We'll get a room ready for Anne Coulter. You won't have to see us there, but please tweet when you arrive. We know you will, and we promise not to mute you. Love the whole damn world. Bob, do you have anything you'd like to plug and tell us about? Well, I, Kima Bob, <laughs> I'm so strange. Other than the fact that I'm strange, uh, part of the reason why I'm strange is because I deal with uh, a few mental health issues, very exciting stuff. Um, and it's so great. I love it. My mom loves it. Everyone loves it. Um, oh. My partners love it. My friends love it. And so I'm on a journey to kind of... Uh, get a hold of this stuff. I'm a young woman that's dealing with adulthood, but also mental health issues. Whoa, so much going on. <laughs> so um, I do this through comedy, but also through a radio show I have called Unstable, an uh, exciting name that scares me to like say all the time, because who wants to be that? But maybe that's what I am. So yeah, <laughs> that's on Roundhouse Radio. It's exciting. Listen to what? it. Roundhouse Radio, yeah. Unstable with Kima Bob. Yeah. So do we go to Roundhouse Radio's you, website? How do we get it? Like, you're going to be like, google.com, right? And then the box is going to come. <laughs> and you're not feeling lucky. You know what you're looking for. <laughs> so you're like, Roundhouse Radio, Unstable, search, boop, boop. I appear. Okay. Should be like one of the top ten. You're right. You're right. I do regret. I do regret asking. K you're K right. And, and <laughs> Kima, just so you get this right, is K E M A H. That's true. Bob is B O B. Yeah. It's a slave name. <laughs> That's it. And and there. And then we go. We go. Just yeah. saying no goodbye. No, yeah. I mean, it has to be. They're not. I assume not Bobs in Africa. <laughs> Just saying, America did this to me. <laughs> Kima Bob, you have to come back on the Guilty Feminist super soon. I'll do it. I feel like <laughs> only if I can solve important problems. Like yeah, well, you what did. To say. You improv yeah. three. She did the improv three ways. Yeah. smashed it, and Apple she smashed cam. it. Bisha Kayali, do you have anything to plug? So if you go on the Twitter website, <laughs> twitter.com, twitter.com, dot com, yeah. http semicolon colon. What's a semicolon? Colon. With, with <laughs> HTTP colon <laughs> forward slash forward slash twitter dot com <laughs> forward slash Bishop K. Alley. <laughs> Click follow on that and follow me on Twitter. Follow Bishop on Twitter. To keep track of everything we're up to, you can follow Guilt Fem Pod on Twitter or The Guilty Feminist on Instagram. There's also a Facebook page you can like and a mailing list you can sign up to. And if you like what you hear, please go to what we're now supposed to call Apple Podcasts and rate, review, and subscribe. It helps other people to discover us. And give it five stars. <laughs> you have been listening to The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest co-host, Fisha Kayali, and a very special guest, Kima Bob. The recording engineer was Chris Sharp. The music was by Mark Hodge. The producer was Tom Selinski for the Spontaneity Shop. Thanks to Tony and Hannah at PBJ Live and everyone at the Y Theatre, as well as all of you for listening. 
For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com. There's always a man in that seat. There's always a front row full of women. It's really, it's, fourth yeah. from the end, it has become a weird thing. There's always a man in that seat. What's your name? I'm James. James. Hi, James. James, yep. Mm. <laughs> May I? Mm. Feminist butt. Oh, yeah, go you. Sorry. sorry. I thought, thought you were saying, just trying to keep James it on. out. I was no. like, <laughs> it's like, can I have him? I was like, oh, I mean, I mean, I don't Why know. would I ask permission? Right. Uh, 